Building a gaming PC can be a challenge. You need to know how to put everything together. You need to know what parts to choose and how to make sure that they work together and are compatible. And sometimes you need to know when to build. And that's actually a really good question for right now in September 2022, because there are big product launches on the horizon and no one wants to build a fancy new computer only to have it immediately supplanted by the new hardware that comes out. For the end of this year, we already have a confirmed announcement from AMD that they'll be coming out with new Ryzen 7000 series processors. We're also expecting new graphics cards from AMD's Radeon team before the end of the year. On the Nvidia side, we're expecting the launch of the RTX 40 series in some shape or form within the next couple months. And likewise for Intel, we have a new series of CPUs coming out called Raptor Lake that will slot into existing Alder Lake compatible motherboards. But this is my monthly build series where I usually give you guys a parts list for a computer to build. So do I recommend building right now? Uh, no, I do not, but I'm not gonna let that stop me. I have a parts list today for the fastest gaming PC that you can build for right now, which has come way down in price. And for those of you who aren't building a new system, I have a bunch of deals for you too. Excellent. Today's video was brought to you by the Corsair K70 RGB Pro Mechanical Gaming Keyboard, powered by Axon Processing Technology and Genuine Cherry MX Mechanical Switches. This board packs its aluminum frame with features like dynamic per-key RGB lighting, a detachable USB Type-C cable, durable PBT double-shot keycaps, and IQ software support on both PC and Mac OS. You also get dedicated media keys, a multi-function volume roller, onboard storage for up to 50 profiles and more. So for further details on the Corsair K70 RGB Pro, click the sponsor link in the video description. So first off, I'm not building any systems today. I'm just going over parts. So if you'd like a walkthrough tutorial on how to build a PC, check out my how to build a PC playlist. I will link that in the description. And I also have setup guides for how to set up a PC that you've built for the first time, which is an important step to actually making it a functional system. But let's skip to the good part. Here it is right now, my parts list for the fastest gaming PC that you can possibly build right now, within reason, I'm talking about the core base level performance of each part. Of course, you can do overclocking and liquid cooling and liquid nitrogen and stuff like that to make stuff faster. But I'm talking about something that's accessible in terms of off the shelf components. And the nice thing here is that the whole total price of the system is coming in at less than $2,400. And that is roughly the price that many RTX 3090 Ti graphics cards were selling for just a few months ago. The MSRP for this card is $2,000. You would often find them for 2,200, 2,400 or more especially during the height of the GPU shortage. So it's really nice to see that the prices have come down and you can build a really, really high-end system for a much more reasonable price now than you could several months ago. That said, the system is going to be last gen fairly soon because we're using an AMD Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. This is a really, really good CPU for gaming, not quite so much for mixed use if you're gonna do content creation, video work, or that sort of thing, but it is only $385, which is significantly less than the 5900X or 5950X. That means we're sticking with the X570 platform. That means we can also use DDR4 memory, which is much cheaper than DDR5 right now. And thanks to prices continuing to drop in other areas like SSDs and even power supplies, and I've seen some nice case deals popping up, even with a 360 millimeter on one liquid cooler, we still have this base price of $2,363. So this is in part due to some price cuts for even the CPU. The 5800X 3D is on sale for $385 over on Amazon. Double check your pricing though, because this is still very much closer to the MSRP of $450, actually $440 with a promo code right now over on Newegg. And that's another thing that was slightly interesting today is, is I feel like there were some better deals on Amazon than on Newegg as I was going over uh, the components and everything. Here's that EVGA 360 millimeter all-in-one uh, liquid cooler. And this I actually have listed for $115, but the price has dropped even just a little bit more down to about $108. Here is our graphics card, the most expensive component in the build, but it is the fastest graphics cards or one of the fastest graphics cards that you can purchase right now. And at $1,200, that's uh, quite a bit less than the MSRP of 2000. And it's nice to see that even in the high end, prices have continued to drop. For the rest of the components, I wasn't going for the cheapest possible options. I was going for something that was reasonably priced, but also that would pair well with something like a $1,200 graphics card. This one's a little matchy-matchy because I did go with another Asus Tough component, but the Asus Tough series of motherboards have been very well reviewed for this generation. This is the X570 Pro, which is marked off by about $20. And it does have some nice onboard features 
is like Wi-Fi 6. And yes, a USB 3.2 Gen 2 front panel header. I was looking for some good memory to pair up with this build and I found the Vengeance RGB RT, which is Corsair's line that's uh, specifically optimized for Ryzen, which honestly shouldn't be too much of an issue if, if you don't get something that's optimized for Ryzen, but this is just a little bit more peace of mind that you'll be able to plug it in, use your XMP settings, and you should be off to the races. It's a 3600 speed kit with cast latency 16, and it's currently available for $128 over on the Corsair website. You can get cheaper memory than this if you don't want the RGB or the fancy Ryzen built-in support. So check out the individual deals when I go over them in just a minute if you're interested in that. We have a 1000 watt power supply. I went a little bit overboard with this, but the 3090 Ti, especially if you're gonna overclock it, uh, is often recommended to have at least an 850 watt, if not 1000 watt power supply. And for $130, the EVGA 1000 GQ is 80 plus gold rated, 1000 watts, and it is also partially modular. For storage, I just have a single NVMe SSD, and you could always add more, of course, uh, but I feel like this is a really nice balance between price and performance for the Samsung 970 EVO plus one terabyte. Don't get the 500 gig version that's 75. One terabyte for 100, or even the two terabyte for 200 is a much better deal. And yes, there are cheaper NVMe SSDs out there, but here you're getting uh, very close to the threshold of PCIe Gen 3, uh, which is 3,500 megabytes per second uh, reads and 3,300 megabytes per second writes. I also wanted a good Good case, and I found this really nice deal over on Newegg uh, for the Corsair IQ5000X, which is a case that I have worked with and built with before, and it's usually uh, as much as $200, currently $165, and then a $60 off promo code right here on Newegg brings this down to $105. Even with the tempered glass on the front here, this case still has solid airflow, and the inclusion of the uh, three RGB intake fans there makes sure that you have lots of airflow right off the bat, and then of course you can expand from there. It's got plenty of room in the top for a 360 millimeter AIO as well. So that's my parts list for the fastest gaming PC that you can build right now with off the shelf components, of course, within a little bit of a margin of error, depending on whether or not you're overclocking and uh, what sort of conditions you're working in. But the RTX 3090 Ti has dropped significantly in price. I still don't necessarily recommend it. I hope I made that clear at the beginning of this video, but if you are just itching to build a system right now, you can get a much, much better and more reasonable deal than you could several months ago, or especially in 2021. Oh, and if you're wondering why I'm actually showing off the Palette Game Rock edition of the RTX 3090 Ti, uh, I, I didn't have the Asus Tough one on hand to hold up and show you guys and using the thumbnail, so I hope you forgive me. This one's actually pretty hard to find in the US, although it is a really nice version of the 3090 Ti. Hopefully they'll make a 40 series variant that's similar to this, because even though it's pretty kind of ostentatious with all the bling and RGB on there, I, I think it looks pretty cool nonetheless. That said, let's run down the rest of the deals. I'm gonna start by talking about CPUs. These aren't all necessarily deals, but I'll talk about them as I go along. Actually, this one is a deal, the Ryzen 5 5600 for $140. Again, if you're itching to build right now and you're looking towards the budget end, this is definitely where I'd point you for a starter gaming PC CPU. And again, keep track of where you're buying from because the Newegg deals right now are not as good as the Amazon deals. This is like $47 more expensive. Don't buy it there. Likewise, don't buy the 5600X right now for closer to $200. I just feel like with the 5600 being 140, it's not really worth the extra 50 to $60 just for a little bit more clock speed. Speed, and it looks like it is the same price over on Newegg as well. If you'd like a motherboard to pair up with a Ryzen 5 CPU, a current gen, uh, then I'd recommend one of these. We got a Gigabyte B550 Gaming XV2 for $130. That's full-size ATX. We also got the Asus Prime B550 Plus. This isn't gonna be a great overclocking board, especially if you plop in one of the higher end chips like a 5900X or 5950X. But if you're just rocking a six core, it will do just fine. And then we have the MSI B550-A Pro, which is only uh, $134. Over on the Intel, side, the prices aren't quite as competitive if you're comparing them to the Ryzen 5 5600. The 12400, which is the six core uh, sort of comparative Intel CPU for that, is still going for $194, so price there hasn't changed. It is being sold by Xinjian Pi for $180 over on Newegg, a top rated seller with a total of two ratings. What, I, what does it take to be top rated, Newegg? Apparently not much. Anyway, I, either way, I'm not really recommending the 12400 right now, but if you do happen to end up with a current Intel LG 1700 CPU. Uh, here's a solid motherboard to pair it with, the MSI Mag B660M. This one's only $130, I know, because I added it to my cart. But let's continue up the line for the AMD CPUs. The 5700X is about $250, maybe $260, depending where you buy it. Again, always best to reality check here because this is the eight core AMD Ryzen 7. But there is another, the 5800X, and that is selling for less money on Amazon, $246. So 
Yes, get a 5800X for less money than a 5700X if you're buying an 8-core right now. But again, that's not the case over on Newegg, so Newegg needs to update their prices. 5900X is also on a bit of a fire sale, down to $370, $371 over on Amazon. And if you are doing content creation or if you're gonna be doing a lot of video transcoding work or that sort of thing, I would absolutely recommend the 5900X over the 5800X 3D. And again, we have Amazon outbidding Newegg, who is still selling it for 400. The 5950 the X has also seen some nice price reductions. It's down to 550 from its original MSRP of uh, 750. Was it 750 or 800? I forget. Point is, that's a better price for the uh, top end chip on the current AM4 platform. And it's only five bucks more on Newegg, I guess. So pick your poison. Let's talk about other components in the system, though. We have uh, this memory kit that I've been showing for several months now because it's sort of my baseline entry level memory kit. And you can get a 16 gig kit. That's two by eight gigs, uh, which is DDR4 3600 not megahertz mega transfers for $51. And this has been creeping down and down and down. I think this is also maybe a few bucks cheaper than it was last month. Or hey, double up your capacity to 32 gigs with two 16 gig kits, uh, still with roughly the same speed and timings for $90. So memory prices will tend to go up from here, but just bear in mind that this capacity and speed is available for about this price. And a kit that doesn't even look too bad, it's got a nice gray heat spread around there that should blend in with your build otherwise. And then reality check that against what you're getting and whether or not something like RGB is worth, you know, an extra 20 or $30. Uh, this is a DDR4 3200 speed kit, slightly better timing, so CL16. So there is your RGB premium for that one, which of course adds several frames per second. Uh, in terms of storage, we actually have some really good deals and some really good deals from last month that I looked at and I was like, the price has gone down even further. This Kingston NV1 isn't going to be the fastest M.2 NVMe SSD you can get, but $40 for a 500 gig one is not too bad at all. 2100 megabytes per second reads, 17 100 megabytes per second rates. Oh, and by the way, the one terabyte version is also quite a good deal. It's a page load for $77. But an even better deal for a one terabyte NVMe SSD is this one, the PNY CS1030. Really similar performance in terms of reads and writes, 2100 megabytes per second and 1700 megabytes per second, and only $66 for the one terabyte version. A much better deal than $64 for the 500 gig version. Definitely go for the one terabyte in this instance. But that's not all. We have this Team Group MP33, which is a little bit slower than the Kingston drive, but it is down to $33.50. The price on this one has just been dropping and dropping, so a really nice entry level drive there. And again, we have the one terabyte version for only $65. And here's a drive that I used in my uh, super fast builds that I went over the parts list for already. One terabytes for $100. Uh, you're just gonna get more peak level PCIe 3 performance uh, in terms of the reads and write speeds, and it's a Samsung 970 EVO, which are really good drives. If you're looking for mass storage, you can get a two terabyte SATA SSD for $103 right now. This is awesome, two terabytes for 103 bucks. If you're looking for a nice spot to drop your Steam library, uh, that's probably a good option for you. Or if you have a very large Steam library, uh, this one is still $270 for a four terabyte uh, SATA SSD. This is a Levin JS600. I can't really vouch for the brand or anything like that, but I'm, I'm sure it's fine. I'm, it, it's got reasonable ratings and everything, right? But the price per gig there is uh, super nice. Let's talk about cases apart from that Corsair uh, 5000X that I showed you, which is a really good deal in the intro. This is just sort of my baseline case that I've been showing people as a starting off point. $55 uh, for a full size ATX case with a couple fans installed, good airflow, and it's even available in a few different color finishes. But I wanted to point out the Fractal being so happy that I've recommended the Focus G so much uh, has made a successor to it. Recently launched, I don't know when this launched, just a couple weeks ago. This is the Focus 2 and it's $70 uh, for the non-RGB version. There's also an RGB version that comes with uh, two RGB fans that is just 10 bucks more. The black version does also come with those two intake fans. They're just not the RGB models, so that may or may not be important to you. For some people, it's actually better to not have RGB. I totally respect that. Moving on to power supplies though, I didn't find quite as many uh, like lower wattage power supply deals, but that's okay because for the next gen graphics cards, we're expecting power draw to be up. So getting a higher wattage power supply right now for a graphics card you might upgrade to in the future isn't necessarily a bad idea because pulling out a power supply and reinstalling one is kind of a pain in the butt for your build. Uh, so here's a 700 watt 80 plus bronze unit for $74. And right as I was about to say, here's a 700 watt 80 plus bronze unit. This is supposed, this is too much money. The price has gone up like literally since the last hour when I looked this up. So uh, don't get this one. Here's a 750 watt 80 plus gold rated unit. Uh, this is from Silverstone. Not modular or anything, but it has uh, flat black cables, which 
which is pretty nice. And this is only $68.50. And again, I'll post the link in the description to the EVGA website and all of their power supplies, uh, in particular their 80 plus gold models. Uh, there have been some good options here for some pretty good discounted prices. So here's 700 watt, 80 plus gold for 65. I do not think these prices are quite as good as they were uh, last month or a couple months ago. Prices have gone up a little bit on the power supplies. So perhaps consider their bronze uh, models if you're looking for a good deal. You only lose a little bit of efficiency, but here you can get like 600 watts for about 40 bucks. Now I'm gonna do a GPU roundup. I'm gonna start with AMD Radeon cards and then I'll also talk about Nvidia cards. And uh, prices for GPUs have continued to to go down, which is really nice. So a lot of the prices I'm talking about today are a good 20, 40, 50 bucks less than they were just last month. Starting with the Radeon RX 6600, the cheapest model I found was $240, if you count this mail-in rebate. It's the ASRock Challenger, which is a two-fan version. We also have an XFX Speedster Swift uh, RX 6600, only $10 more at $250, uh, straight up at Amazon without a mail-in rebate. One step up from there is the RX 6600 XT. And the thing I like to point out is $300 is the price at which I was telling people the RX 6600 uh, had become much better priced. Now the 6600 XT has come down that far. And again, you don't need a mail-in rebate or anything like that to take advantage of that price. One step up from there is the 6700 XT. And here we have a unit for $410 if you include this mail-in rebate. These were going for 440 to 460 last time I checked. Here is one more over on Newegg, the MSI Mech RX 6700 XT. This one is $420 after the mail-in rebate. Nice. There is a middle child 6750 XT for just a little bit more. The cheapest one I found there was $480 for this XFX model over on Amazon. And then the RX 6800 is down to $560. Again, no mail-in rebate or promo code or anything required. Add to cart and available on Amazon. I didn't put in listings for most of the highest end models of graphics cards because those often get to be pretty price prohibitive for a lot of people. But I do want to point out that the RX 6900 XT was on a shell shocker on Newegg that's probably not available anymore but that was $700. So if you're really looking for the most bang for your buck in terms of a high-end graphics card, uh, the Radeon RX 6900 XT and the RX 6950 XT can both be found for well below $1,000. So that is a great option if you don't want to spend the money on a 3090 Ti. And even though the discounts on the Nvidia side haven't been quite as significant as uh, the AMD Radeon cards, $380 is now your price for an RTX 3060, getting very close to the MSRP of 330. We also have a 3060 Ti here for $450. And again, I believe this is down to about 20 or $30 from uh, when I last checked at the beginning of August. I'm very happy to announce that you can finally find an RTX 3070 for the MSRP of $500. Hooray, cheers and everything. You just have to buy it on Walmart, which is which is fine. It's a PNY uh, three fan version of this card, which is, which is totally fine. And also funny, the RTX 3070 Ti, uh, the cheapest one there I found was also at Walmart uh, for the low, low price of $620. And the final question, is the RTX 3080 MSRP yet? Uh, again, kind of, sort of, there were a couple sites that had them available with some mail and rebates and stuff like that. Uh, but the cheapest I found on like an Amazon or a Newegg was $740 for this gigabyte three fan version. This is the 10 gig LHR variant of the card, but for most gamers that shouldn't really make much of a difference. And that pretty much wraps up my builds and deals video for this month. So again, I don't really recommend buying new parts and building a new system right now. It's probably gonna be worth your while to wait at least a month or two to see what happens after the new AMD stuff launches. And especially if you can wait till after the Intel CPUs, the Nvidia GPUs and the AMD Radeon GPUs launch, then we'll have a much better idea of what's coming out, the performance, and that might drive some really nice sales for some of the current gen hardware as well. But I'll post links to all the hardware I talked about today down in the video description. So check that out. Also put a link down there to PC Part Picker, which is is a great website for getting a build together and doing price comparisons, as well as Camel Camel Camel, which is a great website for price histories to see if you're getting a really good deal on a product or if they just raise the price to then put it on sale and make you think like you're getting a good deal. But if you guys enjoyed this video, you can help me out by clicking the links in the video description, by hitting the like button on your way out if you truly did like it, of course. And you can also check out my store at paulshardware.net where you can find shirts, mugs, pint glasses, including this new one right here, new 8-bit design, which includes all of the different parts of a PC ties in perfectly with this video. It's just such an epic theme and everything. And finally, if you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's a great way to get notified whenever I post a new video. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.